and uh, it prompted government again to lift the ban and allow for the importation of onion into the, into the country. What we are grappling with as a nation is the issue of fuel. We have seen uh, tanker drivers protesting, demanding for improved uh, conditions of service and also the way the sector is being run. We saw also the minister in charge of energy, Matthew Nkua, having meetings with these uh, tanker drivers. And uh, also we have seen the minister of uh, transport and communication, Toto uh, you know, holding meetings with tanker drivers on the copper belt, as well as uh, Lusaka in trying to understand really what is the challenge. We have been also assured by the oil marketing companies association through their president, Dr. Kafla Mubanga, was assured the nation and the general public that uh, there will be no fuel pump price increase, but it will remain the same. And we have been told that this is just a minor setback. You, you, when, when, when you visit uh, 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 filling stations within Lusaka, most filling stations do not have pump fuel. Also on the copper belt, the same, the same is happening. I want to understand what is it that has led to this. We've been told our economy is not doing fine. Now, with the shortage of fuel, are we going to see our economy recovering or it will continue to perform badly? What is it that is leading to this? We are in an election year. What is it that we can do as a nation and those that are in government to make sure that um, we alleviate some of uh, these uh, challenges. We take a look at uh, what the protesters, uh, the tanker drivers, the demands that they have, uh, you know, put across to government and also the response from government as well as the assurance that was given by all marketing companies uh, limited, uh, OMCAS, uh, through their president, Dr. Kafla Mubanga, who said uh, this is just artificial. Is it really artificial? After looking at these uh, two videos, I'll be opening the phone line. The number is 764 25 Get to call me on this program and share with us where you are watching me from and um, share with us the situation in your compound or in your constituency or the province as well as the town that you are in. If you've got fuel, how is the mood and what do you think is leading to this and what can be the immediate uh, plan or immediate solution to make sure that uh, we continue to have fuel because fuel helps us to move our economy. I'll be back shortly. Following the submission of a full report delivered to President Edgar Lungu by Transport Minister Mutotwe Kafuaya, Pertaining the findings from his fact inquiry mission on the striking tanker drivers both in Copper Belt in Indola and Lusaka province, President Edgar Lungu has on forth directed that the 50% allocation for fuel transportation, which was given to the local transporters, be implemented in reality. And President Lungu has therefore directed that the tanker drivers that are striking should resume operations immediately. Other than this, the President has further ordered the Ministers of Transport, Energy and Foreign Affairs to look into the treatment of the drivers both when they are operating locally and outside the country. Delivering the directives on behalf of President Lungu, Mr. Kafuaya is assuring the striking drivers that himself, with support from his other two counterparts, who are the Energy and Foreign Affairs Ministers, will ensure 100% implementation of the Presidential Directives. Uh, out of uh, these engagements, um, many issues came up, uh, which our drivers are uh, affected by. Uh, and a significant issue uh, was that His Excellency the President granted uh, the Zambian people 50% uh, allocation for fuel transportation. Um, and our people complained that uh, this empowerment, which they have been granted by their president, has not been uh, implemented fully. This directive was not 100% implemented because of the rates, uh, such that uh, some suppliers of fuel 
and some ONCs opted uh, to go outside. However, the Minister of Energy has indicated that uh, the Zambian players uh, speaking through Peters have agreed to lower their cost so that uh, they have now become competitive. They've become much cheaper with those rates prevailing elsewhere. And today, 4th April 2021, marks day five since the tanker drivers had downed tools demanding for better and improved work conditions. Meanwhile, several filling stations across Lusaka town have run out of fuel, causing panic buying for many motorists. Reporting for Movie TV News, Namangolo Mundia. such as the transport and energy, respectively. But both sectors have undeniable potential for socioeconomic benefits, which contribute to about 18% of the country's gross domestic product. And further, these sectors have largely accounted for a high number of employment to both casual workers and white-collar jobs. But of recent, these sectors have encountered hiccups, as some Tazama tanker drivers are clocking day four of tools down. The more than 100 drivers have ceased all operations of delivering fuel and oil to their prescribed destinations, advocating for a change in their work conditions. The drivers allege that government has not been giving them the 50% share of the tenders, but instead this is being given to the foreign drivers. Some of the affected drivers have since aired their grievances to the movie TV news crew. The major issue is about the 50% that the government gave us. I'm sure the SI will sign that 50% should be given to Zambian transporters. Yeah. Even the minister is on record assuring us that the 50% will be given to our Zambian transporters. But unfortunately, as a today, minister, even a, a honorable minister, even as I'm speaking today, we still have drivers that are stuck in Mozambique, in Beira. Being stuck there one week or what, some of them more than a month. Some of them that even leave their tracks in Mozambique. And whilst that is happening, Zimbabwean trans transporters are coming here. They off-road, they go back to Mozambique, they load. Whilst our owner there is happening language. Stanley, to us drivers when we complain. But what is difficult now for them, regional minister which is there, to listen for us drivers on a train, us Zambians. Actually, we are not dollars a year. We us, we are <laughs> us Zambians. We are the one which is putting him on that office. And uh, to my side, he's the campaigning the president, and I'm very shamed. And concluding his fact-finding mission, which began in Indola, Transport Minister Mutotwe Kafuaya says President Edgar Lungu will intervene in this driver's matter as he is concerned about the current prevailing situation. And most importantly, I want to tell you that I was in Indola on account of an instruction by His Excellency the President. The President asked me to fact find. Go and find out exactly what the issues are. What you have told me, sir, is consistent with what I was told by your colleagues in Indola. What does that mean? It means that the report that the president is going to get will speak specifically to the issues that are affecting him. And after an independent investigation, it is discovered that some of the effects of tempering with the cited two sectors, which are the transport and energy respectively, results in disturbance in service delivery, as some filling stations across Lusaka town had little or no fuel. And motorists were seen slowly queuing up to buy the product, which is likely to turn into panic buying if no interventions are put in place. Meanwhile, these drivers have vowed not to return to work if their concerns are not considered with immediate effect. Reporting for Movie TV News, Namangula Mundia.
The phone line is open. You can come through on the number 0764250055 and uh, be able to comment on uh, the topic of discussion Zambia today. And we are discussing the issue of um, fuel shortage in the country. The demands that um, tanker drivers are, give, are giving is that government um, assured or promised to say 50% should be given to local transporters. But according to these drivers, is that uh, the 50% is still being given to foreign transporters. That is one issue, and they want it to be implemented. They want to have the share of the 50%. Also, they have talked about the ill treatment that um, drivers do face when uh, they go to Mozambique, as well as Tanzania, that uh, they are made to wait for weeks, even months, whilst those tank, their colleagues, the tanker drivers are from Mozambique and, South, and, 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 and uh, Zimbabwe are having it easier for them to be loaded with fuel, come to Zambia, and uh, with the Zambian drivers, this is not the case. My guest on the program is Mwape Musonda, who is a business analyst as well as a youth advocate. Uh, Mwape Musonda, good evening and welcome to the assignment. Thank you very much, uh, and uh, good evening to the listeners. Government wants to empower the people. Government wants to empower the locals. They have come up with the 50%. First of all, we saw uh, in the construction sector a 20%. The government, and through the president and other ministries, they say 20% should be given to local contractors. And now with the fuel transporters, government also responded and said 50% should be given to local transporters. At the moment, this is not the reality. 50% is on paper, but what is on the ground is that the Zambians, the local transporters, are not enjoying the 50% local uh, being given to the locals. What do you make of this, first of all? Um, of course, uh, government uh, implemented the 50% um, haulage for the local uh, transporters. Uh, what I would say is that uh, there is always a period for what we call teething uh, issues. So government implemented the 50% haulage uh, for the local transporters. Uh, I would say we have to give it time. Certain decisions when you implement them, you don't expect a de uh, results immediately. So yes, uh, government implemented that and we are in the process of implementing that and what I would uh, tell uh, our colleagues in uh, the local transporters of course what they are doing is good huh? uh, they are putting pressure on government which is very very important because the minister uh, speaking on behalf of, of government promised that this is what was going to be implemented and we have seen I think there is some goodwill uh, I think, uh, is it three weeks ago or two weeks ago, we saw the president empowering some youths with uh, tankers mm. where these youths are going to be uh, transporting fuel. And our hope is that this work shall be realized because we have seen some youths in this country being empowered with such uh, empowerment uh, programs like we saw when uh, some, 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 uh, some, uh, some transporters uh, public transporters who are empowered with higher buses, but they never, they never fulfilled uh, what they were empowered with. So we hope that this time around, as uh, some youths were empowered with tankers, we hope they will be able to live up to uh, the expectations. So uh, yes, uh, the local transporters were promised 50 percent, and I like the pressure that you are putting putting on government, which is very necessary. Let them continue putting the pressure, but also they should be considered that uh, what is at stake is our economy. Because without fuel, uh, the economy won't, won't move. Government has come up with a policy. 50% should be given to local transporters. Mm -hmm. But these transporters are saying, we are not seeing the 50%. And according to them, they are saying, foreign transporters are the ones who are enjoying the 50%. Percent. Can we say there is sabotage somewhere, somewhere, where 
government has come up with a policy, the implementers are the ones who are failing. Instead of the people to start reaping the benefits, but again it has to take the president to instruct the minister that go on the ground and give me a report. Where are we finding, f finding it so hard? Where are we missing it? You see, uh, it's very difficult huh? uh, how, how we, we, we do things in this country. Huh? It's quite difficult because uh, see, why should it be difficult? Because government and, and government came up with this uh, policy. Why should let, it be let difficult? Me, let, me, let me make my, my, my point clear. You see, I'll, sorry, I'll, I'll divert a bit and mm. I'll talk about other things. You see, I'll give an example of um, how government uh, in February implemented, uh, they, they banned the importation of onions. Huh? Mm. Government banned the importation of onions so that, because when government was banning that, the local producers of onion, tomatoes, potatoes, they actually appealed to government to ban the importation of these products. But after that ban was implemented, just this month, oh sorry, last month, we saw that uh, we have had shortages of these products on the market. Yes. And uh, government was forced to make a U-10 on the, on the ban. And uh, we, uh, we imported about 100,000 tons of onions, which is, a, it's, which is very, very, very sad. I'm, personally, I'm hurt by that. Because, look, there are more serious things that we should be looking, focusing on as a country in terms of importing. Maybe they were talking about fuel, because we don't produce fuel in, in this country. We, we are not endowed with na that natural resource of oil. So we are forced to import it because it's necessary. It's what keeps our uh, machinery and industry running. But things like onion, you find we're importing. How can, how can we allow ourselves to import onion? What is the science that is behind producing onion and tomato? Even you and I can produce onion on a daily basis because we plant, we get uh, seedlings from whatever supermarket, they cost 20 kwacha. You plant those things, it, they will take about four months to grow and you are able to harvest them. So what I'm trying to get at is, uh, government is trying to empower locals to haulage that fuel and bring it here. But you fail to understand why the technocrats in this country are failing to implement what government is trying to do. I may be wrong, but I think where you say there's sabotage, uh, hugely, I think more, more, uh, largely what makes us fail is ourselves as Zambians. We may point a lot of fingers on, on government, you know, politicians and whatever, but you know the, the people that actually implement government programs are the technocrats. So the issue of fuel, uh, I, I think we were talking about this, was it in January? We talked about fuel. I personally talked about fuel and I, I condemned the transporters because then government had implemented, um, uh, they, 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 they removed the VAT on the VA, uh, sorry, import duty, excise duty, they removed it on importation of fuel. Then the transporters were complaining that the product was expensive and they wanted to increase the price of fuel. So what government did was to avert that increment, government removed excise duty as well as uh, uh, import duty on the product. And we saw that uh, these, the, 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 these OMCs, uh, they didn't implement that, that, that increment. But now what we are seeing now, the uh, thing is that, yes, government removed those uh, taxes, which is in itself, they, 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 they reduced the price of fuel. But now what we are seeing is that these transporters and OMCs, now what they want is that they are, uh, maybe, I don't know, maybe the transporters together with the, uh, um, the technocrats in the industry. They're trying to um, twist uh, government because, because, you know, pro fuel is a very political product. It's not just political, but it's also economical. Because right now, I was coming to this uh, station, I had to switch cars because the car that I usually drive doesn't have fuel. I couldn't buy fuel. So I had to ask for another car from somebody. And that's how I've managed to come here. Now, now, now that you've mentioned that government will come up with a policy, but the people to implement are technocrats. Yeah, yeah. If, that, if technocrats are failing us, then who is going to implement these policies that government comes up with? 
Um, it's a difficult uh, ask. Uh, and I think that's why we should be able to come in as Zambians and be patriotic about this country. Because if we are going to try to sabotage ourselves and not do what we are supposed to do, because I believe personally that um, the only people that are going to develop this country is you and me. Mm. And we have to be serious about development. We have to be really serious. Because if we are not serious about this development, uh, what will happen is that we won't achieve it. Look, we are here talking about how foreigners, we are complaining that foreigners are, they are getting the 50% of transportation, but uh, ourselves as Zambians, we are not getting it. That's a good thing. We need to complain like that because we are the ones. When we, tra you know, you know what, what the drivers are talking about, the transporters, what they are talking about is when you bring that product, you actually make money. So what they are protesting about is because they are not the ones making the money, but rather the foreigners are making the money. I support that 100%. I want the Zambians, it should be that 75% of the product that's coming in should be brought in by Zambians and it, uh, 25%, maybe 25% should be brought in by foreigners. So what they are doing is a good thing and I support that 100%. But the problem that we have as Zambians you know, let them get the 100%. Me, I'm, I'm actually an, advo an advocate for 100%. Let the Zambians have 100%. Because when you and me, we have 100%, uh, all the income that we're going to make from that activity is going to remain in the country. We shouldn't even fight for 50%. Let's fight for 100%. But are we able to deliver the 100%? That is the problem. And, and, we have as and, 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 and that is the problem that we have as Zambians. And um, with the issue of onion, the people that were producing onion, potatoes and tomatoes, are the ones who cried to government. They yes. come up with a policy. Exactly. Yeah. Ban the importation of onion, tomato, because we have the, the capacity to grow. Then we saw government u turning and, uh, you know, they uplifted the ban. But again, farmers have continued to cry to say, they were supposed to give us time because we have onion. Other farmers from the eastern, the eastern province said, we have onion. That onion is, is, rotting, is, huh? is in our fields, but what is hampering us or what it's the challenge is transportation because roads are bad. So even when government was coming up with a ban to answer to the cries of the farmers, the issue of road network has been a challenge. <laughs> no, I, yeah, I mean, I, I'm not a farmer. I don't do onion. Mm. I'm a farmer, of course, I do fish farming, uh, but I don't do onions. So I don't know the challenges that the farmers are facing who are doing onions. But what I would say is that, uh, yes, we have a challenge with road network, but um, we should make provisions. You know, uh, I'm... Personally, I will tell you, I, when I started uh, talking, I said, I'm disappointed with how we have failed to oh. deliver the onions. Huh? Because onions... Who has failed to deliver? It's us. It's us. The, it's us, the Zambians. It's the farmers together with you and me. We have failed. Farmers are telling you, Mr. Msonda, that onion is available in my field. But the problem is the road network, transportation. What road network do, you, do the farmers want? But, but they are saying they, they, they are failing to go to their fields oh, no. and pack the onion and bring it maybe to Lusaka or to the nearest market. No, no. And so the challenge there, it is uh, not them. Them they have produced. Onion is available. No. Let me tell you, huh? I beg to disagree with that uh, at what school of thought. Mm. You can't say that you are failing to, produ to bring a product to the market uh, because there is no road, net road network. Look, how many... Uh, have you, I'm very sure that you have been to Soweto. Huh? Yes. How many products do you see when you go to Soweto? There is beans, there is carpenta, there is cabbages. How are the transporters of cabbage and rep finding the product in the market? So just onion, there is no road network for onion. Just onion alone. The potatoes are every, you know, sweet potatoes, there is sweet potatoes, there is uh, Irish potatoes. If you go and, and look for Irish potatoes, Irish potatoes are uh, all over. You see that? It's because the farmers are finding, farmers together with uh, the supply chain, they are finding means and ways of making sure that the product is available. The truth for me, I would say, of course, it's my opinion. Uh, uh, somebody may disagree. Yes, the farmers may say the, the, the product is there, onion is there. But me, I think onion is not there. 
we have not produced enough. I know uh, in certain circles people are saying, no, government didn't give enough uh, chance to the farmers to produce onion and whatever. You know, but government is not the one that said, let's, uh, it's, it's the farmers themselves that said, ban the importation of onion because we have enough. It's the same with uh, edible oils. Huh? Mm. You know, right now we're having a challenge with edible oils. Cooking oil is very expensive. Sala deny dure chine chine mm. Sala deny dura. The reason why Sala di dure is because um, the local producers again appeal to government to ban the importation of edible oils so that we can f satisfy the market. We have a number of pro local producers, yes. Uh, of course, maybe some of them are not even producing. What they are doing basically is that they are importing and packaging. That's what I understand. I'm not uh, a specialist in that sector, but I have, the, the knowledge I have is that most of them, what they are doing is that they are importing the crude oil, processing, or even, even importing the same cooking oil, then uh, they package it, and then they sell it as... Still on the issue of onion and farmers, other farmers said, uh, and, and you have said it, that um, it takes four months or so yes. for you to start harvesting or enjoying your onion mm -hmm. after planting. Yes. They say the ban and the time... It was premature was premature. <laughs> who, who, who cried for the, the ban? It is the farmers, but they needed more time, That's like Zambia four Zambia. months. It wasn't four months. Before four months, government you turned. Don't you think if farmers were given time, government and the policy implementers say we have banned the importation of onion and we know that onion, it will take four months for onion to be readily available on the market. Don't you think if Government gave itself time to say four months. Today, as we speak, farmers could have produced and supplied onion. So we are saying that government, uh, the technical, uh, uh, government didn't plan well. Is that what you're asking me? How can you you <laughs> turn when you are aware that it will take four months for a farmer look, to look. plant and harvest onion? Look. But before four months, you you turn and uplift the ban. Look, for me, uh, what I've said about this issue is that um, I'm, I'm very disappointed with ourselves as Zambians because onion uh, shouldn't contribute to the depreciation of a culture. There are things that we should allow to contribute to the depreciation of a culture, things that we cannot produce. You know, there's technology advanced technology, maybe something, importation of motor vehicles, importation of machinery that we used in the manufacturing sector. Yes, we are allowed to say, let's import this, but something like onion, you and me shouldn't even sit here to talk about importation of onion, you know what? Huh? Personally, I feel we are, the moment we begin talking about importation of, because we don't have enough onion, we are not being serious. Because onion, um, the way you produce onion, like I said earlier, you buy the seedlings at twenty kwacha. You make a small bed, plant that product. Before you know it, as you are watering, you have the onion, is it the leaves? The onion is a bad product, it grows in the soil. But you have the, the, the leaves there. If you want, you can use those leaves as, and, and put them as onion. You see? They will have the same effect. Be at the end of four months, you have a start product and you do. So the issue is we should never get to a point where we say, no, we have not had uh, enough onions. Personally, I feel that actually if we can't produce enough onions, we shouldn't eat onions as Zambians. Let's not eat onion because if we can't produce onion, then we should stop eating onion. It's not important. Onion is not like meal. It's not, you know, minimum is a, is a, is a, is a, is a difficult product. Huh? You know, when we talk about minimum, because everyone has to eat in Shima, uh, it's not like everyone has to eat onion. You know, you can eat a meal without onion and you'll still be okay. But you can't eat a meal without the Shima. You complain about that. Yes, in Shima, very difficult product to do away with. But onion should never be allowed to contribute to the depreciation of a culture. Let's allow more serious things to contribute to the depreciation of the quacha. When you say onion should not contribute to the depreciation of the quacha, is onion contributing to the depreciation of the quacha? And how? Do you know when we import 100,000 tons of onion, uh, you know what it means? When we import onion, 
we are using the when we, we get i would say for example we get 100,000 kwacha for us to import uh, 20 tons of onion when we buy 20 tons of onion we are going to convert that kwacha into dollar and we get the dollar when we get the dollar what we are actually doing is that we are contributing to the pressure on the kwacha to depreciate the kwacha depreciates because we are importing onion that's very bad we shouldn't do that as zambians Let's allow more serious things to contribute to the depreciation of the quacha, not onion. Onion, rep, cabbage, uh, whatever vegetables. They don't need technology. You don't need advanced technology to produce or grow these things. It's like we start uh, import, the way we, we import chickens. These chickens that we, uh, we, we grow, the white chickens. You know, we, you, you know, we eat onion every day. So when we allow a product that we eat every day, if we start importing a product that we eat every day, for example, if we started importing meal, you know what we won't have an economy to talk about? Because meal meal is in every household. It's different from importing a car. It's not everyone who imports a car. But when you start importing a product that you eat every day, a product that everyone depends on, you won't have an economy. So we should never allow ourselves to get to that point. Let's talk about, uh, you know, empowering the, 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 the locals. And uh, I'm happy that you touched the issue of, of, of uh, cooking oil. And you've said it is expensive. And there are things that Zambians are not understanding. Things are not just adding up. You've talked about cooking oil. Let me add, we have sugar. Mm -hmm. Sugar's, uh, the, the price has gone high. We also have onion. The price has gone high. Mm -hmm. But we have farmers, we have uh, Irish potatoes, the price has gone high. And people are asking that these things are produced locally. Sugar, yes, we know that we have got sugar on our market, which is imported, but mm -hmm. we also produce sugar we, in this we country. Of sugar. Yeah, we, we also uh, you know, produce cooking oil. When you go to, to, to these supermarkets or markets and you see the cooking oil that is being sold is produced in Zambia, why should Zambian products be expensive? You know, at this point, <clears throat> I'm tempted to uh, talk about uh, CCPC, that is uh, uh, Consumer Protection uh, Unit. Mm. I'm, I'm, I'm I'm compelled to talk about them because you know uh, these uh, uh, products like cooking oil, um, products like sugar, which we produce and export in huge numbers. Maybe CCPC should uh, investigate how the producers in these industries are uh, handling their affairs, just like they investigated uh, Lafarge and uh, Zambezi, Portland, and. and Dangote, you know, they investigated them and they discovered that actually what these guys were doing is that they were uh, engaging in an uncompetitive behavior, uncompetitive practices. So they formed the cartel and they were fixing the prices as, uh, as a cartel. So we need, maybe CCPC should move in to investigate how the price, prices for all edible oils are being set. Because we are producing these things locally, uh, or maybe we are not, as I said earlier, maybe they are importing and, and just uh, packaging. But oh, at the end of the day, we are saying we are producing. That's what the manufacturers are saying. We are producing these things locally. So maybe CCPC should move in, move in into this, this industry of vegetable oils and find out how these prices are being set. Because there is no way that the prices keep, keep rising. If we are producing locally and we are using 100% local material, and then uh, we see that um, the, the response of the price to the industry is that uh, they are responding to uh, the dollar. No, it shouldn't be like that. It's like the way we are doing, uh, it's like, I'll give you another example. Maybe say, uh, you know Marco Polo towels, huh? mm. they are producing towels locally. They are using, uh, according to them, they say that they use about 95% local material. So meaning only 5% is what they are using the from importing. outside. Huh? Mm. So if uh, there is a, a problem with the exchange rate, we should the price for that product shouldn't be affected. If we are going to talk about the price changing, it should be just 
about 5% of the price. So if the price, for example, is 100 kwacha, and uh, the price is being affected by the international markets because of the exchange rate, 5% of, uh, of 100 kwacha is like 5 kwacha. So the price should just be from 100 kwacha to 105. It should never be from 100 kwacha to 140 kwacha. And that's what happened to the price of cement. You see that? Huh? Price of cement went up by uh, about 30% or so. Same is what is happening to the price of uh, edible oils. Cooking oil is very expensive in this country. So, uh, I mean, as we are talking here, I would want to appeal to CCPC. CCPC, you are listening to this show. Why are you appealing to CCPC? What, what is it that you want them to do? CCPC should move in and investigate how the prices for edible oils are being set. Are we going to be a country of investigating? Because you've mentioned the issue of Lafarge, it was investigated. The issue of, uh, of fuel, we have seen the minister moving to the Copa Bay Lusaka, investigating, trying to find out. Are we turning to be a country of investigating? Everything we have to investigate? Uh, yeah, investigate. Or oh, I heard uh, today in the media, uh, somebody said, no, uh, Zambia is a funny country. Uh, I won't mention the name, but I heard somebody say, no, uh, what CCPC did is bad. Uh, the, now they, what they are doing is like we are setting the price, price setting. Uh, so it's a free market economy, and uh, the industry should be allowed to set the prices on their own. Yes, uh, according to the, uh, the kind of economy that we run as a country, we run a free market economy, mm. and uh, the, mark, the prices for the products in the market are set by demand and supply. But government, through its agencies, has got a role to play, and that is to make sure that there are no... Um, abnormal uh, increment of prices and whatever, you know what? Huh? Because if you are, yes, it's a free market economy. Government has got a role to play. And that's why... And their role is to investigate. No, of course, when things don't seem normal, government has to play a role to investigate. Uh, through its agencies like CCPC, they should be able to investigate. Look, uh, when Dangote came on the scene, the price of uh, cement. cement was about, for the other companies, was going at about 80 kwacha, uh, 70, 80 kwacha. When Dangote came on the scene, Dangote uh, was selling cement at 40 kwacha. You remember? Mm. Dangote started selling cement, I think, about three years ago. Dangote was selling cement at 42 kwacha. And that's how the price of cement was controlled in this sector. Because we saw that the price of cement went up to 80, almost 90 kwacha. But when Dangote came on the scene, the price went to 42 kwacha. It was in the range of 42 to about 45 kwacha, uh, depending on the whatever uh, composition of that, whatever chemical component of the, 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 the cement. Uh, three years down the line, of course, Dangote, we are using penet uh, what, what we call in marketing as market penetration price. Mm. So when they came on the scene, they wanted to get... Uh, they, they wanted their product to be accepted. So they used the market penetration price and they penetrated the market and they were able to start selling. After they have done that, they have penetrated the market. Now, they, they, they are part of the cartel, they are part of the crew and they implemented that. Now we see them also being part of the cartel of price setting. According to CCPC, they investigated them and they discovered that, you know, it's not about the uh, depreciation of the quarter. But it's about what they are doing as a cartel, as an industry. Yeah. Mr. Msonda, in the midst of all these uh, prices and crises that we are facing, the issue of onion, the issue of fuel, one may wonder and ask a question, where is the Minister of Commerce? <laughs> I think the, the Minister of Commerce for Goro, uh, is playing a role. Uh, okay, I'm not an agent for Minister of uh, Commerce, but what I would say is that some of the uh, uh, organizations that are responding, like CCPC, I, I'm not very sure if they are under Ministry of Commerce, uh, but I know that, uh, uh, anyway, I, let me not speak on, uh, I don't know what they are doing, but I think uh, maybe they are playing a role through the government agencies that are there. Maybe they are, I'm not sure, but uh, what I think... But what about the Ministry of Commerce? The, 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 that's what I'm saying. The Minister of Commerce, through their 
uh, different government departments. I'm sure they should be doing something, but I'm, I can't say because I don't know CCPC. I don't know if it falls under the Ministry of um, Communication and what. I don't know, but I can't answer for that. I can't answer for this. Zero seven six four two five zero zero five five. This is the assignment on your channel of choice, a movie, television, today the 4th of April in the year 2021. And we are discussing Zambia today and national issues. We are talking about um, the issue of fuel shortages. Uh, we have seen here in Lusaka that um, there is fuel shortage as well as uh, copper belt. And um, there are some demands uh, that um, uh, local transporters or fuel transporters Tanker drivers are putting across it's a 50 percent uh, you know, contract being given to local transporters. According to them, they have not seen the 50 percent, but it's foreigners, foreigners who are still enjoying the 50 percent. And also, uh, we are talking about the issue of prices. Uh, local products are being expensive. Uh, we have seen that they have continued to be expensive. The likes of sugar, potatoes, onion, and cooking oil. What is it that is leading to this? I'll pick some calls and then uh, listen to what. You, the viewers, are saying hello. Good evening. Hello. Good evening, sir. Hello. Is this TV movie TV? This is movie TV. Reduce the volume on your TV set, sir. Okay. Yeah, I've switched it off. Uh, I'm enjoying your program. Your name, sir? My name from Kitwe. Your name again? Simfukwe. Mr. Simfukwe from Kitwe. Yes. Please, uh, let's hear your contribution. I think the challenge, mostly as you are talking about the onion and all, has been the, the educational part regarding, regarding the market for the farmers. I think where the problem is, is the farmers may do their work, but what is government or whoever doing to provide adequate market for these products? Because what I feel is, for instance, we will not just take this thing to say to the market, like here in Quito, we we'll say we've got Soweto market. What I feel will make good market is for these farmers to have access to the chain stores. What is government doing to do that? Because that's where the good market or the good prices are found. I, I heard you were talking about the Edpo, Edpo oil. Yes. This is not the first time we're having a hike. In that, in that product, even about three, four, five years ago, the same situation happened where government said we are, putting, we are coming up with a plan so that we can support the, the locals to produce this. Mm. And when the prices go up, regardless of the, 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 the product normalizing and everything, the prices will never come back. Okay, will never come down. Why? Because are we providing adequate market for that? Of course, when you talk about the oil, it may different from the onion or from the vegetables and all that. Slight difference though. But what I'm trying to bring about is that the, if government was to come up with like things like cooperatives and all that to make sure that these people, the farmers, have got access to the ten stores and everything, I think we are going to sustain the market and it will encourage a lot of people to do the farming. And where you come and buy to say we don't want to import onion now while you did not prepare, as we are saying, they grow, let's say, about four months for, it takes four months to grow and all that. Mm. Why didn't we say we are going to ban this in this particular month so that we prepare the farmers for this market? Why just ban and expect things to happen like on a crop? It can't do, it can't work out that way. Thank you so, so much, I Mr. Sue. I feel we, we've got more to do with the educational part. Farmers can do their part, but let's provide the market. Thank you. That is uh, Mr. Simfukwe from uh, Kitwe, uh, talking about the education part. Uh, let me just speak about two calls, and then uh, we'll be able uh, to respond. Elder Molonda, good evening. Uh, good evening, Rakio. Uh, how are you, and uh, how is Ndola? Uh, we are okay. Uh, please uh, go ahead, and let's hear your contribution. Uh, yes, I found the discussion in midway, so uh, I, don't, I don't know how the, the my guest is Muapem Sonda, is a business analyst. We are talking about uh, the, the, the issue of uh, fuel shortage, uh, the, the, the demands that are coming from uh, local transporters and the prices of the, 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 the high prices of sugar, potatoes, onion, and cooking oil when uh, these products are produced locally. Yes, I'm aware of the discussion, the, the topic. Mm. Uh, just to you, Chief, uh, the of the guest. Now, good evening, Mr. Musonda. 
Good evening, sir. How are you? How is it? Good evening, Kundora. Good evening, Kundora. Then did you come? Okay, let's uh, pick Lasco, our last caller uh, this evening, and uh, my guest, um, Pemsonda, will be able to respond to some of um, the, 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 the submissions that have come from Mamsonda. Um, Mr. Lasco, good evening. Good evening, Mr. Lasco. Uh, good evening, Mr. Lasco. 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 Hello, good evening. Zero seven six four two five zero zero five five is the number. We'll pick a last call and um, we continue with the assignment. Let's try this one. Hello, good evening. Hello, good evening. Hello. Hello. Zero seven six four two five zero zero five five is the number that uh, you are calling to be part of the discussion on the assignment. We are talking about Zambia today and national issues. We are talking about the shortage of fuel and the demands that are coming from uh, the tanker drivers and uh, also looking at the prices of um, commodities such as uh, sugar, potato. Hello, good evening. Reduce the volume from your TV set. Reduce the volume from your TV set. Reduce the volume from your TV set. We are getting feedback, sir. I'm calling from Bella. Try to move away from your TV set. Okay, I'm away. Yeah, your name? I'm calling from Bella. Your name? I'm Chilando Paul. Mr. Chilando. Yes. Uh, uh, please uh, go ahead. Uh, yes, my concern is uh, over the challenge which the tanker drivers are facing. Mm. Yes, uh, in fact, we are also affected because the products which, which we are selling, we sell normally to tanker drivers. Okay. Uh, so since we are facing the challenge, they are not moving. Also, us, we are also affected. 
Thank you so much, Mr. Chilando. Thank you so much. Uh, let's start with uh, Mr. Chilando's uh, concern. Even those people that are in business and um, they are no, the largest buyers or their number one customers are tanker drivers, Mr. Chilando says even their businesses have been affected and they're appealing to government to resolve this issue quickly so that uh, they can continue you know, doing business with these tanker drivers. Uh, definitely, I want to concur with Mr. Chilando. And I think um, uh, the Honorable Minister for uh, uh, Transport and Communication, Honorable Mtoto Kafwa, should, shouldn't sleep right now. He should make sure that he resolves this issue. Because fuel drives the economy of the country. And right now, where we are, you know, it's forgot, we had... Uh, problems in this country with, uh, you know, there, there are two critical products in this country. Energy, the energy sector is a very critical, I would say, if, if it's a machine, uh, if the country, country's economy was a machine, mm. the energy sector is the fuel that powers that, that machine to run. And that's what uh, our economy is. So energy, there's fuel, and then there's also electricity. So if you have problems with electricity, like we had load shedding, you expect the, a lot of uh, slow progress in terms of economic growth. The way we are experiencing challenges with fuel, we expect a slow economic growth. So we should never allow ourselves to get to this point. And that's why I say the Transport and Communication Minister, together with the Honorable Nkua, the Energy Minister, they shouldn't sleep right now. They should make sure they resolve this problem. Because without fuel, without electricity, without transportation, the economy of this country is in a mess. Mr. Simfuga from Quito talks about uh, education is what is lacking when it comes to farmers. Mr. Simfuga is very correct uh, as well. Mr. Simfuga is very correct uh, because um, uh, what we have been experiencing in this country, you know, I feel to, to a very large extent uh, that our leaders don't explain to us the implication of certain decisions they make. I will explain that using uh, an example. Remember when uh, President Michael Sata was in power, uh, he implemented, um, was it SI-55 and SI, I forgot the other one, but SI-55 was about, uh, it, the, together the two of them were uh, an SI about um, uh, banning the trading in, uh, in, in foreign currency. Mm. So you are only supposed to trade in, in in Kwacha, and also the, another SI, I, I think, uh, I'm, I'm not sure, but it was about banning uh, the export of, um, like, the products from, from copper mining. Mm. You, are not, you are not supposed to export concentrate. You are only supposed to export copper that has been processed. Huh? Mm. When he implemented that, he didn't prepare us for the backlash that was going to come with it. You know, when immediately implemented that, I think about uh, two months or three months or so, what happened is that uh, we had a shortage of uh, foreign currency, especially the dollar in the economy. When we had that backlash, uh, as Zambians, as a people which we didn't expect, which we were not prepared for, uh, the obvious thing that we did was we reacted and said, no, President Michael Sata, please revert to these things because we are... The, the culture is depreciating and we are experiencing a lot of problems. So, the leadership that we have, that we've had over the years, they don't usually prepare us in mm. terms of uh, uh, when they make a decision, they should explain to us, you know, it's like in a home. When I'm in a home, I will explain to my family, you know what, guys, sit here. Uh, right now, I'm about to borrow a loan from a bank. I we are renting in this house. So, I want to borrow a loan from the bank so that we can build that house that, uh, on that plot that I bought. So what will happen is that when I borrow that loan, uh, this money that you have uh, on Sunday, I take you, you have lunch, those things won't be there anymore because I'll borrow and then the deduction will be like this. That way, when you explain to your family like that, when they, they won't ask you, even your wife, you know, baby, the way you are, you, you are used to shopping like this, now you no longer shop like that because I will be getting a deduction and it will be like this. And that's 
Mr. Simfukwe in Kitwe. He's saying we should, the leader should explain to us the implications of certain decisions that they make. He's very correct. The issue of onion, uh, it was not, you know, I, I don't know. I don't know how, the, maybe our leaders feel that when they explain a lot, uh, probably we won't buy into the idea. But I think we are at a point where as Zambians, we are, we, we, we are well invested with information. Mm. Leaders should just explain to us what it is. So they should try us. Now, now, now that you've mentioned the issue, I know that we're winding down. My director is uh, telling me to wind up. Mm -hmm. Now that you've mentioned the issue of leadership, we're in an election year. Different political parties are trying to sell their manifesto. Mm -hmm. What is it that people should look out for? And what sort of message and packaging should these politicians come up with? You've mentioned that they don't want to explain. Even their manifestos. It is very rare in this country to see a politician explaining the manifesto, but they'll be talking about things which are very, very impossible for them to implement. Yeah, like, uh, oh, you know, you know, you, under, you listen to somebody, uh, I think they even have a code. There are things that they will say when they are campaigning, and there are things that they will do when now they are in power. So, uh, my message to the people that want to govern this country is that. We have gotten to a point where Zambians, uh, it's not every one of us, but my, uh, not majority, I wouldn't say majority, but most of us, some of us, were able to understand uh, what, what, what is really going on. And they will do well uh, to explain themselves in a proper way so that we understand the, the, the exact message that uh, they, they're trying to propagate to us. Because we see through these things. I mean, n nobody can... Cheat, uh, uh, cheat me. I understand what uh, the politicians are trying to propagate and bring to me. So, uh, and because I understand, I also have people that uh, follow me. So, if somebody is lying, I will know and I will tell my people, look, this person is lying. So, I would urge the politicians that even in as much as you go out to campaign there, uh, explain to the people what you are really going to do. Don't think that... Uh, if you explain too much, people won't vote for you or uh, people won't understand what you're saying. No. Explain. Let people understand what you are really going to do. Because uh, in this country, politicians don't say a lot. Instead, they, 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 uh, they, they will say certain things that are even impossible for them to do. Mm. But at the end of the day, when they get there, you realize Don't you think by them saying things that are very impossible for them to do, that is when they can be voted for? Because people won't even ask questions. They'll just say, okay, our leader said, and uh, let's give them a chance. For all, it's like I, I want to have a girlfriend, uh, or I want to marry her. Um, I will go to a woman and I will propose love to her. Uh, if I lie too much, I promise too much, you know that marriage won't uh, last. Uh? Mm. Yes, I may win the love of that uh, uh, woman, uh, and I'm, I, I'll, get, I'll get that woman. But eventually, what will happen? My, that woman will have too many expectations for me, and I will because those are the things that we are promising. Yeah, because I lied, so I should just promise according to what I can deliver. Yes, uh, when you want to get something, you can uh, sugarcoat certain things, but don't overdo it. Talk about the things that you're actually going to do. What you can do, what is within your means. Because um, maybe it's because of us as, as Zambians as well. We don't hold people to, we don't hold our leaders so much to, so that they can account for what they promise. Mm. Because so many of our leaders lie to us and they promise a lot of things. Mm. At the end of the day, they don't even deliver what they promise. Mm. And we still vote for them. Who is to blame? Uh, are we going to continue blaming uh, these politicians who promise us things that they can't deliver, or we blame the voters themselves who don't hold these uh, uh, people that they elect into to account. We can't, uh, I would say I can't blame the people because um, as a people, you know, when you are a leader, when you aspire for leadership, you have to uh, provide leadership to your people. So I can't blame the people. Most of it, you know, it's like in a home. You as the father of that family, your children don't understand what you have to do to, in order for you to provide for them. Mm. And they didn't even ask that uh, you should be their father. It's you who wanted to be their father. And that's why you fathered them. So you are the one who is held accountable. If you can't provide, you should be able to answer why you can't provide. 
So even in, in leadership, uh, yes, some of the people may understand. Some of the people, most of the people, they don't understand. It's like in this, even here, the setup of movie TV. Mm. You know what, where you, movie TV, there are people who report for work. They don't know where the money that they are going to get paid is going to come from. They don't care. What they want is to get paid at the end of the day. But the owner of the company knows that I, I'm going to employ this one and I'll pay them. So if the owner fail, fails to pay them, I can't blame the owner, the person who has been employed. I have to blame the owner. You are the owner. You brought this person in. You have to pay them. So it's the same with the leadership of this country. I can't blame the, the people. But you blame the leaders. Yes, the leadership should be accountable. Mwape Msonda, thank you so much for making an appearance on the assignment. Thank you very much, Fokoro, and uh, it's my pleasure. And uh, thank you very much, listeners and viewers, for, for tuning in. This has been uh, Sunday's edition. It, it is uh, the assignment. Uh, my guest uh, has been uh, Mwape Msonda, who is a business analyst as well as a political activist, uh, also a youth activist. Uh, on behalf of Mavu Dopiri, the director and uh, producer of the program, my name is Kelvin Dabola, Chifokolu. Happy Easter and good night. We didn't talk about my business.